Oh, hello, Mr. Uh... Well, hello there, Danny. <laughs> What's your name again? <laughs> Mr. Crosby. Mr. Bing Crosby. You know, I, was, I haven't been here to meet you before. So I it's so know. exciting for me to meet you. I just wanted to come around and wish you a happy holiday season. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. Have you been making sure to say your prayers and give your kids what for? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, yes, I've been saying my prayers. Good, good. Listen, I was wondering. I know he stops in from time to time. Have you seen jolly old Saint Nick yet? Not this year, no, but he does stop by. Well, when you do, you let him know his old pal Bing and Tim Allen are looking for him. <laughs> the lore grows deeper. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sadie Hawkins Pod. Hello, Jessica. I'm so excited. I got to meet a celebrity. What? Who? They stopped by Bing Crosby. Oh, this is what I get for going to take cold medicine right before the podcast. <laughs> yes, Jessica's very sick. <laughs> <laughs> I did mix and match for my booster, and that Moderna hits hard. Wow. Yeah, because we were sick last week. Yeah, and... and I also, was, don't get your booster on the tail end of a chest cold is what I'm right, also learning. Because we had the chest, we both had chest colds last week, and I got all better. <laughs> there she goes. Sorry. I got all better, and then Jessica had her appointment for her booster shot. I've already had my booster, but Jessica had her appointment for hers, and she's like, "Should I say I'm sick?" Because they ask you, "Are you sick?" I did let and the I doctor was, know, and he's like, "Ah, it's fine. You just might feel a little extra crummy." <laughs> Boy, do I ever. <laughs> she feels real crummy. <laughs> Jessica's felt every side effect that you can oh, feel from a booster. Fun. <laughs> but I hope everybody else out there is doing well. And I apologize that you have to listen to my even worse voice than normal this week. I think it's beautiful. I think it's very sexy. Aw, thanks, babe. <laughs> Nobody else out there better tweet at you and tell them tell you that your voice is sexier or i will beat them up that's my prerogative alone so uh last week you wanted to talk about our spotify raps and we didn't get around oh, to I it totally forgot it was on the list it. to talk about last oh, week because everybody's been talking it. about it oh i was too afraid we to waited we it. waited until a week after everybody gave a shit <laughs> to talk about it <laughs> do you still want to talk about your spotify rap and let everybody know? so reliant oh, k man, didn't sure. make either of our top fives yeah they did oh they made your top they five. sure did oh okay i'm sorry i'm sorry i was misinformed reliant k was on my top five last year they were not on my top five this year but i don't really care or feel bad they because... were my number three. Oh, nice i was shocked let me tell you i have every main reliant k release on my phone's hard drive and that's mainly how i listen because it sounds better so especially when we're reviewing a song it just sounds better and then if i need to make a social media post on my phone through my iMovie on my phone i can use all the songs on my hard drive so that's really where i listen to reliant k also i mainly use spotify for kind of like listening to new music and some other music but yeah, Are, you want to talk about this? You want to go through your list? Uh, well, I, Sadie Hawkins' pod had its own rap. That's did it right. Not? Yeah, and I didn't know that that would happen. <laughs> and I'm not prepared to talk about it now. So you want to go? What ahead. was Sadie Hawkins' pod's musical aura? Because you did not have one. No, that's not how the Spotify rap works. They're letting oh, you see. know how how your like listener base was. I I assumed as much. I was joking. Oh, okay. <laughs> So I, I had just said, oh, we'll save it for next week. And then I did end up clicking in and I'm like horrified and embarrassed by my <laughs> so Spotify So you're not going to talk about it? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so my number one song was Drunk Face by Machine Gun Kelly. <laughs> oh, right. I was there when you were horrified that that was my case. My number one listen to artist was Machine Gun Kelly. <laughs> Good for you. I've only listened. <laughs> supporting new artists. <laughs> supporting new and up-and-coming up artists. That's so nice of you. The only album of his I've listened to is Tickets to My Downfall. 
and I'm in the top 2% of Machine Gun Kelly listener. <laughs> <laughs> what a badge of disgrace. I think you're officially part of his EST, right? That's what his friends are called, the EST. So my number two artist was Taylor Swift. Number three was Reliant K. Number four was Jordan Davis. And number five was The Doors. And But I love that my second most listened to song is is called uh, Morning Glow. And it's from Morning Jazz and Nature Sounds Volume 2. <laughs> That's a jam. <laughs> sure is. And then three Taylor Swift songs. I'm waiting for them to go back on tour now that... <laughs> You know, as long as Omnicron or whatever it's called doesn't get in the way. <laughs> and I listened to 69 different genres this year. All right. Hey, up top. <laughs> here's, the, here's the photographic proof of that. I believe you. <laughs> and my audio aura, uh, my music moods were yearning and cozy, which, Aww. yeah, sounds about right. I didn't get... A musical aura. What a bummer. I guess not everyone got a musical aura because I went, because when I, I didn't even know it was a thing and Jessica asked, what's your musical aura? And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Then we put our phones side by side <laughs> and watched both raps at the same time until her musical aura popped up and mine skipped. And then I went on Twitter and I found a lot of random people like didn't get them. And it can't possibly have to do with, I didn't listen to enough music because if I tell you my stats, like I think I... Yeah, we'll figure out my stats, but I listen to more music than you on Spotify, despite the fact that I barely uh, yeah. listen to Reliant K on there. What's funny is that we had similar hours, but it's because <laughs> when my podcast thing came up, it's like all that I listen to podcast wise on Spotify is just like nice, relaxing sounds, but like in an eight hour or 10 hour loop. So that's what really got the uh, my my hour count up there okay. was that while we're sleeping, it's just like there's like nice, nice rain sounds happening in the bedroom. Well, our podcast wrapped. The first thing it's like on January 6th, you released your first episode of the year. Patreon free. The distance K is for karaoke. I'm like, OK, that's kind nice. of a. Kind sure. of an anticlimactic first episode of the year. But then they say, Spotify goes, that's got to feel good. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> it was very little work. It Nothing already in Spotify rap feels good. No. <laughs> well, maybe this will feel good. You had some impressive growth this year. We can't wait for what you do next. And this year we had 85% more followers. Nice. 28% more listeners and 15% <laughs> more hours. <laughs> Listens what, to us. What, what a what a what a what a large difference. Yeah, if in, one, new people. If, if one if if we had one hour listened to on Spotify in 2020, in 2019, <laughs> that's a fifteen percent increase when we had fifteen hours. Thank you to our two Spotify listeners. Let's see what else. Oh no, it actually lets us know twenty nine people listen to us on Spotify. <laughs> ching ching. You know what that means. We've been wanting that Manscaped money. I've been wanting Oakland Coffee to sponsor us. We are well on our way. On Spotify. I guess that's... Who uses Spotify oh, for podcasts, It though? says 29 <laughs> fans listened to you more than any other podcast. Oh, okay. So it's not just that we only had 29 listeners. I feel a little better then. Wow. I don't. We don't really look at the numbers too closely. No. I mean, I know, like... That our Zeke Thanks, Power episode. Thanks, all 15 listeners. Yeah. I know our Christmas episodes do amazing. I know our Zeke Power episode did amazing. And for some reason, our Office episode did fantastic. Wow. It's like our best listened to episode ever. Huh. I don't know why. Three fans listen to you on International Podcast Day. By the way, I am subscribed to us because I use <laughs> Spotify is the only podcast I listen to. Sorry, City Hawkins Pod is the only podcast I listen to on Spotify because I refuse to listen to podcasts on Spotify. Because if you listen to a podcast and you don't like it, you can't then like remove it from your history. Yes. You have yeah. to wait six months for it to just fall off. So I'm like, I'm literally never listening to a podcast on Spotify ever again. I remember years ago, Spotify, if you listen to the radio station, like the recommended radio music of an artist, like you go to... Reliant K and you go to Reliant K Radio and it gives you House of Heroes and all those bands, you couldn't delete that station. And it was the most obnoxious thing. Like, if you put a radio station on as a joke or just for one little thing, you couldn't then get rid of it. And people on Spotify support forums were always like, 
why can't you do this? Why can't you do this? How can you do this? And every time someone posted that, because I wanted to figure out how, the Spotify like admin people would pop up and they say, please go to the suggested uh, feature editions. Like there was a special form on the Spotify website where you go to suggest features. And people were like, this isn't a suggested feature. It's just something you should do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like I like maybe over the summer, but I feel like it was during the spring. I had started listening to the the New York the New York Times, like whatever their little like bite sized podcast is. And I listened to like two or three episodes maybe. It's still every day is like you want to listen to this, right? <laughs> right? And I'm like, no, like I, I don't listen to Spot- Spotify for podcasts. <laughs> Oh, okay. I, I skipped a bunch of stats because honestly, these Spotify <laughs> for podcaster stats are kind of boring. But this one says 44% of your fans listen. First of all, I don't like the word fans. I only like the word listeners. 44% of your listeners listen to you between 11 a.m. and 5 p.m., making it your most popular time. Good to know. So good to know. That's when we should be posting our episodes, I guess. Uh, you released, oh, who cares? Yeah, I can figure that out on my own. How many minutes of music did you, uh, podcast did you listen to? That's it? Okay, well, thanks. <laughs> so, Danny, who, yeah. who was your most listened to artist this year? My most listened to artist was uh, MXPX. Because Shock. I was part of the whole MXPX challenge to help them with their algorithm. Oh, you can't turn this off? We'll just turn it down. <laughs> some, oh, no. some Megadeth was playing. I, no, I literally turned it down and it's not... Oh, we <laughs> and now everybody knows. First of all, this is the worst part of my Spotify rap. Sorry if talking about your Spotify rap is a dry way to open the podcast, but this I'm passionate about. Dashboard confessional. <laughs> there was a point at that at some point in the middle of the year, I just got obsessed about listening to the MTV Live Unplugged version of Screaming Infidelities, specifically. Because I, I don't know what it was. I've never even been the biggest Dashboard fan. I really only ever owned Mark, Scar, Mission, Scar, whatever that album's called. I only own that one album. But that one specific MTV Unplugged performance of Screaming Infidelities, the way the crowd sings along, it got me here. It got me here. <laughs> it got me all, to quote a phrase, emotional. So I just, I, there was a week where I was obsessed and I kept listening to that version of the song. Now Spotify raps like, oh, you love this song. And I'm like, no, I loved it for one summer as all good alternative rockers do. They love Dashboard Confessional for one summer. That's and- how I feel about everything in my Spotify wrapped was I'm like, I, with the exception of Taylor Swift, I feel like I haven't, and Verlaine K, hey, I feel like I haven't really listened to most of these other artists. Except just at the very beginning of the year. And this is where, yes, but this is where it gets really obnoxious for me. <laughs> Spotify rap was like, here's the soundtrack to your life. And then like, here's the song when you're doing the dance right. routine. And here's the song at the end credits. They claim the MTV Unplugged Screaming Infidelity song is the opening credits theme to my life. <laughs> this is a horrible <laughs> opening credits to any movie. <laughs> this is like a second or third act. And now they say the song playing as you face off against your rival dance crew is Are You Just Scared by Big D and the Kids Table. Which I can I can get that. I can get behind sure. that. <laughs> and then because this was my year of thrash metal, like <laughs> I rediscovered metal this year and I specifically honed in on thrash metal and sort of like 80s style thrash metal. I listened to a lot of Megadeth and Testament and Overkill. And so there's this one testament song, Brotherhood of the Snake. Uh, this is the song as you defeat the ancient vengeful spirit, which is cool with me because that's pretty much what the actual song is about. Badass. I can't turn the audio off, but... So, hold on. So here we go. So my top five artists were MXPX because I was helping with their thing. MXPX had this thing where they asked all their fans, hey, please listen to these specific five songs over and over to like reconfigure the algorithm because Spotify actually has a really messed up algorithm that works against artists. It has nothing to do with the like you earn 800 fractions of a penny for every listen. It's not that. It's that like 
you will actually, as an artist, release... Because M- uh, MXPX's manager talked about this on the podcast after the whole thing to ask the fans helped. He's like, you could release an album that outstreams all of your previous albums. Like, literally outstreams all your previous albums. And the Spotify algorithm won't care. The Spotify algorithm takes, like, the longer a song has exist or, existed or the longer the album's been around. So their new album was outdoing... Certain things about their new album were outdoing previous songs, but like the 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 top tier songs just refused to reflect in that way, and they tried to work with Spotify to fix it, and Spotify wouldn't work with them. So that's why they went to the fans. It's like, hey, just stream these five songs continuously, right. and it like worked. Like the algorithm started to like fix itself. So my top five listens were MXPX, Megadeth, Green Day, Mighty Mighty Boss Tones, and Iron Regan. Iron Reagan. I always say Regan, but I meant Iron Reagan. Nice. What were your top genres? Oh, uh, ska, punk, thrash metal, hard rock, and Christian rock. Shock. <laughs> uh, my f- number one was classic rock. Uh, number two was Christian punk. Number three oh, was mm-hmm. hard rock. Number Mine was four Christian was punk, soft too. rock. And number five was dance pop. And that dance pop is thanks to my workout playlist. <laughs> <laughs> and Christian punk is just like Reliant K. Right. Yeah, my... Yeah, mine wasn't Christian rock. It was Christian punk. Well, anyway, we're too strapped to our devices, Jessica. That's what I'm learning. You're too dependent on your smartphone. You need to get outside and enjoy life more and listen to the music of nature. Indeed. You Gen Z (laughs) silly goose. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, a lot of my top stuff was just nature sounds with jazz. So am I not kind of already (laughs) doing that? Hey, you wouldn't download a car. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Any other top of the show business. You're the one who's sick, but I'm the one who's acting like I have a fever. (laughs) Yes, we do have voicemails. Nice. And... Google Voice sent us a Google Voice wrapped, so let's go over that. They're going <laughs> to, you got 50 voicemails this year. You did that in the, like, you got mail <laughs> voice, and I was like, well, flashbacks. <laughs> so Daniel called, and uh, he called about, what did he call about? Oh, yeah, 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 okay. That's right. He talked. He's calling about something from last week, and then I definitely agree when he said this. I'm like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Let's hear this. Hey guys, it's Daniel again. Um, but basically what, uh, I have to say is about the scrubs thing. Um, I think you're probably right. There's like a 90% chance that like it is just a error that somebody put some false information on IMDb and it didn't get fact checked. But, um, I do know that from listening to, uh, the scrubs podcast hosted by Zach Braff and Donald Faison, um, there, there were some, they did run into some licensing issues when putting scrubs on streaming platforms um, that had to do with some of the songs that they had used in the show. Uh, if you're into scrubs at all, you know that like... Am I into scrubs at all? No, I'm not. I've never watched it. <laughs> Have you ever watched it? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> I'm not against it. Like, I know plenty of people are... I've heard plenty of people be against that oh, show. Oh, oh, gotcha. But I'm not against I, it. It was it's just, just never, never really... Got, yeah, on my radar. I'm also not a big TV watcher overall. I have a very select amount of TV shows that I really enjoy. But we'll get to talk about one of those shows based off of what Daniel's saying here, but I'll wait till he's done. Oh, is it Baywatch? That's exactly what it is. <laughs> nice. Uh, I think particularly Krista Miller, who played Jordan... Um, and, and is also the wife of the showrunner, um, Bill Lawrence was really into, you know, finding these smaller artists and, and, you know, finding the perfect songs to go underneath, uh, some of the pivotal scenes in the, in the show and stuff. But a lot of those, uh, artists songs were, you know, for whatever reason, the licensing for them wasn't compatible when they tried and put it, putting the show on streaming platforms. So, a lot of those songs, unfortunately, had to get swapped out for, you know, royalty-free music or whatever it may be. Um, and so it is possible that initially Scrubs, whatever episode that was, did not have Reliant K in it, and then it got changed to the Reliant K song. Maybe it was just easier to get uh, for streaming uh, when they put it on streaming. Again, that's probably not the case, but I just thought it might be possible since the version you listen to uh, – you know, maybe that's like the original version that somebody had uploaded or something. Uh, you know, I don't know for sure, but it is possible because I, 
the other thing about that is I'm pretty sure that Scrubs season one came out uh, in maybe 2001 or 2002, but definitely before um, Deck of Hall Through Your Hand came out. I'm, I would have to look that up, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. So if that is the case, then there was no way that the Ryan K version could be uh, in that episode. Um, uh, Cause yeah. And for the record on that, uh, Deck All's Bruiser Hand did come out late 2003, less than a year after uh, Two Lusts came out. So, uh, anyway, uh, have a good Advent season, guys. Have a good one. Yeah. So many things I want to comment on there. First, he's absolutely right. Like, I didn't even think to check when was the release date of that episode of Scrubs <laughs> nope. and did the song even Oops. exist then. <laughs> But what he said makes complete sense because we talked about it in recent episodes, but Jessica and I have been watching Baywatch. It's just one of those, like, sort of, like, continuing to, to, like, be at home all the time things. It's like, you know, it's not technically quarantine now, but we're still basically in quarantine. So we started watching Baywatch, and we took our time going through season one. But on Hulu, it's Baywatch Remastered. And... I think that they actually, I don't know this for certain, but I think from context, what I figured out is like, they actually like went back to the negatives and like cleaned them all up, but then had to re-edit the shows to look like the original shows. Like they didn't just go into the existing master tape of the final edit. Like they fully re-edited every episode to match the original episodes from better quality, you know, source material because... Also, in every episode, the so- every episode of Baywatch has a music video or two. Yeah, season two has decided to do two, and I'm like, oh man, going on this trajectory, are we- every season, are we just going to get an extra music video per episode? That's right. We definitely talked about Baywatch when we talked about uh, Charles in Charge, because they mentioned Baywatch yes, in that show. We had right. just started watching Baywatch yeah. then. So, first of all, well, let me take a side part here. (laughs) At least up to the beginning of season two, Baywatch is a way better show than I was ever led to believe. Like, I'm actually... Is it Danny? Well, it is. (laughs) Because, like, my whole life, I was, like, led to believe that, like, maybe it'll get worse throughout the seasons. But, like, at least for the first one and a half seasons, it's way better than I expected. Because I was just expecting this completely vapid like mindless thing where it's just like check out these beach bods and that's it and it's just like soap opera but it's not a soap opera it's actually like uh what do you call that uh um what a a procedural it's actually more of a procedural for how they save lives and they really show like important like life-saving information and yes there's a bunch of like dumb storylines here and there the shark derby the shark derby was the i don't want to spoil it for anyone who watches it but it was like the most shocking thing like i know that later on there's like a there's like a killer octopus and stuff and they and then we also started watching baywatch nights right away which has like actual like supernatural stuff in it like vampires Amazing. and stuff but th- that doesn't actually come into play until like season 5 or 6 or something <laughs> i'm just saying the first season of Are baywatch Are you telling me that there's going to be vampires on the beach? I don't know. Needing to get rescued? I don't know how it's going to (laughs) work. But Baywatch, way better show than, like, culture has had me believe my whole life. Like, I'm actually invested in some of the characters. I'm invested in the stories. It gets goofy just like any episodic weekly television show from, like, the pre-streaming world, of course. But it's way better than you expect. Now, Hulu. Every episode they had to re-edit from the ground up and make it match, like, frame for frame the original edit. But they couldn't get the rights to the same songs that aired in, like, 89 and 90 and all these earlier years. So they just go and they get, like, band camp music or SoundCloud (laughs) music. And they, like, license these, like, unknown artists that kind of have music that kind of sounds 90s. But it often has that thing of, like, this clearly sounds like a band from 2015 trying to sound 90s. So it always feels a little off. But then we go to Daily Motion because Daily Motion has the original broadcast uploads in like VHS quality. And then we sometimes when we hear a song, we're like, we got to hear what this song originally was on TV. We do that all the time. And when we were talking about Scrubs last week, I deliberately went to the Daily Motion website because I know that they have a lot of pirated television that's easy to watch and you don't have to be afraid of viruses or whatever or a lot of pop ups. So I did go to see that Scrubs clip from last week on Daily Motion. So that 
if it's the same as Baywatch, if the Scrubs uploaders <laughs> on Daily Motion operate the same way as the Baywatch uploaders, it's probably the broadcast VHS rip. Now I need to actually go on Netflix or Hulu or something and see, did they replace it for streaming with Reliant K? Maybe they did. Maybe that's what happened and we should have prepared this. But hey, we still got five, three, three or four weeks left of Christmas, so we're all set. So thank you, Daniel, for calling. After all that opening, talking about Spotify and Scrubs and Baywatch, I could use a rest. God rest you me, merry gentlemen, Jess. That's the song we're doing this week. It, it is. God wow, rest you merry transition gentlemen. There. Very smooth. Thank you. So this is God rest you merry gentlemen as performed by Reliant K. And this is one of the three sort of outlier bonus tracks that Reliant K did uh, that were added to a special iTunes only special edition of uh, All Work and No Reindeer. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> I'm really off tonight. <laughs> let it snow, baby. Let it rain, dear. There was an iTunes special edition and I think 2008 or nine. And this when Ethan was in the band and Ethan drummed on these three tracks. This is actually the third track. We've done them all. We did the previous two, Oh Holy Night and Silver Bells. We've already done those episodes, so this wraps this up. Uh, after those tracks were removed from iTunes at some point, like that special edition iTunes only of Let It Snow Baby is no longer in that form on iTunes. Now the way you get these three songs is on the, uh, have your, what is it called? <laughs> Tis uh, the season Tis to the go season to. to go to. On that comp. With a bunch of Goatee Records artists doing Christmas songs, the three Reliant K songs are not on Let It Snow, Baby, Let It Rain, Dear, which I definitely did not know before we started doing this podcast. In fact, when we started doing this podcast, our first Christmas episodes, you discovered... Uh, I'm just saying this now because we're do- this is the last of these three tracks that we're doing. I remember in... When did we start this podcast? Did we start this podcast in 2018 or 2019? 2019. 2019. This is our third Christmas, so 2019. Yeah. So when we started this podcast in 2019, our first Christmas episode. Yes, because we just finished the Halloween EP. Right, right, right. So one of our first Christmas episodes, in your deep dive, you found an interview where they were talking about getting into the studio with Ethan on drums and recording three new Christmas songs for iTunes and that at the time, Thiessen had this idea of what if we every year or two record a couple more Christmas songs and keep tacking them on to our Christmas album. And then eventually they'll be like, you know, this meta Christmas album. It just keeps growing. Well, it's Christmas, boys, and we know you're back. So <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's get on that. Like, hey, you're back. Get back to that project. And it's just another one of those like cool sounding ideas that just never seem to make the light of day. And the other one that Josh from Reliable J talks about all the time is, uh, well, I, I heard about it from him basically. And so he's mentioned it here and there is like the uh, air for free reimagined, like this idea that they do a second version of air for free officially right, right. where the songs are all kind of slightly different. Reliant K's version, like Taylor's version. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just a couple yes. years later. <laughs> but that also never uh, came to fruition. So you discovered this interview when we were talking about our first Christmas episodes and we're like, Oh, there are three bonus tracks and we would look for them. And I found them on YouTube and I'm like, Oh, I guess they're on YouTube. I guess they're not on streaming. And then one day I finally just actually typed in the track names on Spotify and I'm like, Oh, they're on this goatee comp. And I had seen that goatee comp and I always just falsely assumed that it had a couple of songs from let it snow, baby, let it rain dear. Not really. No, it's, it has these three extra bonus tracks. So speaking of the Tis the Season to Goatee, uh, not only do they have that comp from 2010, but they've put together a playlist on Spotify as well. So I was going through it today. And Danny, do you have Can't Wait for Christmas by Toby Mac and Reliant K on our list of songs to cover? No, I don't. <laughs> Oh boy, you're you're gonna love the intro. Are we to gonna this. have to do a Patreon or a regular episode about this? Tyson, I don't know about you, oh. but I love this time of year. Me too. Me I too. Me too, guys. <laughs> oh boy. 
How many songs have to mention <laughs> Tyson's name specifically? There's Charles in Charge. All the songs. There's something else. Like, it's just genius. Like, everybody knows who Matt Tyson is because his name is mentioned in the songs. Wow, okay. Can't wait for Christmas. You know, I've seen this Toby Mac Christmas. It's Jessica showing me the artwork where it's like a red background with the like a black and white photo of Toby Mac and the text on his chest. Yeah, I've seen that artwork, but I didn't realize Reliant K was featured on it. I remember when Toby Mac did like there's that pressing on mashup with Toby Mac. Do you remember that? Yes. Hold on. We did that. Yeah. I mean, that was an that was a ways a, that was a ways back. That was a long time ago. Hold on. You keep talking while I look for this. Oh goodness. <laughs> did you go over your top five artists? I'm now thinking about that. Yes, I did. I just, okay, I just closed out of my <laughs> Here Spotify <it> raft. <laughs> Yours versus pressing on. When Goatee Records released their own mashups album. <laughs> <laughs> How does this compare to this? Tyson, I don't know about you, but I love this time of year. Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> That's what Tyson should have said. <laughs> don't get me started. Don't even get me started. I love this time of year, too. Wow. <laughs> I guess we might have to just put that on the list. I mean, we haven't put... Yeah. It says Reliant K. Yeah, but I mean, I, not it's, it's not like we put some kind of hurt or a hurt so good. What's that song called? It's not like we put that Fang song on the list. Yeah, but that's just Matt Tyson. I know, but it and is, it's it's weirdly like labeled to uh, inc- K. incorrectly categorized on under deliberately Reliant K on but incorrectly labeled yeah. to Reliant K. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we'll we'll make a decision there, folks. Do you want one more episode than originally intended <laughs> of Sadie Hawkins Pod? Can't wait for Christmas. Well, if you can't wait for that episode, you're going to have to. Please, all two of you who listen on Spotify, let us know. (laughs) (laughs) Now we're talking about God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. So this song is fun. I guess after Silver Bells and Oh Holy Night, which are sort of more traditional, laid back renditions of those songs, like Reliant K's take on Silver Bells and Oh Holy Night are much more laid back. I wasn't expecting... Because I honestly, I never listened to this. Like, this is the first time I listened to it. I got to be honest. Like, as much as we listen to the Christmas album, I never think to go back and listen to these three bonus songs. I just, in my spare time, I just always forget that they exist, unfortunately. I wish there was some other thing. Like, really, Relying K should maybe put out, like, a little Christmas EP with these three songs to kind of, like, push people towards listening to them more. I'm sure a lot of fans out there do. I'm sure you're better than us. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I don't think to. <laughs> So I never really listened to this version until we were preparing to do the episode. And I wasn't expecting it to be like this raucous sort of uh, like post hardcore thing. Yeah, the musical vibe of this song and not even just the Reliant K version. It, it, like all versions of this song tend to be so dramatic mm-hmm. and kind of dark. And I do really enjoy the Reliant K version. But yeah, kind of dark in contrast to the lyrics. Yeah, although I don't, although this is one of those Christmas songs that uh, mentions Satan, so I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> How many Christmas songs bring up Satan? <laughs> like, I know it's it's in the, it's in a, it's in a nice construct of like, hey. Can't Wait for Christmas does by Toby Mac and Reliant K. <laughs> this is Satan's fa- least favorite time of year. <laughs> I don't know why, well, it's a Toby Mac song, so I just assumed it's got a little like a uh, rap beat. I don't know. I didn't even listen. So yeah, I don't know. What am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm real off tonight. I already said that, but I am. So this song, yeah, I wasn't expecting it to be more rockin' because it's got that extra bit of distance from this thing that's already sort of portioned out in my head where I only think of the more rocking punk renditions of Reliant K Christmas songs as belonging to Deck the Hall, Bruise Your Hands. Just like Nothing for Christmas is a punk song. What? You're just laughing at the title of the song or the way I say it. I'm getting nothing for Christmas. Don't just call it nothing for Christmas. (laughs) I think we went over this when we talked about the song. Some titles, some official titles do say nothing for Christmas. 
some of the official titles by other artists have left the I'm getting off or they put the I'm getting in parentheses. It's just it's on me for having the humor of a middle school boy. I apologize. So, like I'm getting nothing for Christmas. I always assume, oh, that's a fast, punky song. So that couldn't have been recorded for Let It Snow, Baby, or Let It Reindeer. But it was. It right. was recorded for Let It Snow, Baby, Reindeer. So these extra three bonus tracks, there's even that extra bit of disconnection where I don't expect this song, especially since it starts off somber and then kicks into gear. I keep not expecting this version of God Rest You Merry Gentlemen to be such a rockin' song. It feels like something out of five score. Even so though we, it's got, it's it's an Ethan era song, you know, and when you think Ethan era, you think, you think forget not slow down and burden the B sides, which don't sound like five score at all, and yet this song sounds like five score to me. So I mean, it's a good song. I don't have a ton more to say about how Relying K interpreted the song, but I really think and that Relying K, I really think that Relying K should release like a Christmas EP on their streaming pages so people are more directly sent towards these three songs. I think that would yeah, be exciting yeah, for, for people sure. like ourselves who take these three songs for granted and to have a little new Christmas EP. People would be really excited or to just put out a special edition of to repackage another special edition of the Christmas album and put these three at the end. But really I think an EP would probably be the way to go because people would see new Relying K release, mm-hmm. especially, oh, you know, especially since those those two other more recent holiday EPs are three songs. Yeah. The, the Halloween and the Valentine's Day one. So put out a new three song Christmas EP. It'll feel in line with those releases, but you don't actually have to do the work of recording new songs. Right. Although knowing everything we know about Relying K, they're likely to just go into the studio and record new songs because sure. like Bird and the B-Sides and the uh, vinyl countdown, original vinyl EP. Like the story behind all both of those releases was we're going to package some B-sides, but no, let's record enough new music and let's record even more new music and even more. And like always over delivering. That's what Brad Moist said when we talked to him on the podcast that Reliant K always over delivered. So my suggestion for repackaging of these three songs will probably lead to more Reliant K Christmas music and nobody wants that. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, we talked about the song for about 10 minutes. So I, I think that's 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 good. Enough. We talked about you it know. just a little less than we talked about our Spotify rap. <laughs> so I think like that's appropriate. <laughs> I did have some more notes. Let me take a look while you take a look at what you got. Well, while you do that, to talk about a little bit about God Rest You Merry Gentlemen as a song. Um, so we actually, we have a Snopes article this oh, okay. week um, about what does God Rest You Merry Gentlemen mean. Mm-hmm. And so this is by David Mickelson from December 5th, 2013. Claim the opening line of the carol God Rest You Merry Gentlemen means God make you mighty gentlemen. Rating false. Origin. In recent years, every Christmas season has been accompanied by a number of stories about the so-called <laughs> war on Christmas, a term which refers to supposed efforts by government, business, and non-religious groups and organizations to disassociate the celebration of Christmas from Christianity and instead focus on its secular aspects or replace the celebration of Christmas with a generic winter quote-unquote holiday. Although it is much less common and it doesn't have a catchy name the reverse phenomenon also occurs attempts are made by christians to influence secular elements of christmas with religious symbolism and meaning they did not originally possess thus every christmas season also brings the circulation of apocryphal tales about how candy canes were created to symbolize jesus and how persecuted catholics securely ensconced securely encoded tenants of their faith into the song the 12 days of christmas whoa wait what uh another uh, example uh, hold on i gotta i gotta hold i gotta <laughs> pause there Do you, have i i told told you about the kirk cameron like video essay film saving christmas right yes i watched you watch it a little bit i think we've brought it up on the podcast maybe once or twice it is it is it is ground <laughs> i'm sure kirk cameron intended it to be a uh a real a real shake up in the Christian take on Christmas Oof. and it's a shake up of something for sure. 
It's it's amazing. It's not even a How do you movie. think he feels about his sister's Hallmark career? Oh, I don't know. But she's Christian as well or something, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Like, she had a thing. I remember Candace Cameron. She, I was trying to remember her name. She had a thing where, like, she posted, like, pictures of herself. I, I don't even know how I heard about this, but just, like, some random Twitter headline caught my attention on this. Like, she posted pictures of her and her family in, like, their swimsuits on vacation. Oh. And apparently a bunch of people in the comments were like, this is sacrilege. How what? dare you post that or something? It's ridiculous. But then somehow that made headlines in some thing that Twitter decided I would want to see. And I'm like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> but she was like, I'm not ashamed that we're in our swimsuits. And I'm like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I don't know why that just it, I don't know even why I mentioned all that but I, I saw that once but I just meant because Kirk Cameron seems a little bit more intense than Candace Cameron Bure exactly. and talk about you That's know taking the Christ this, yeah. out of Christmas what does Hallmark Kirk Cameron do, would but, never you know, show himself much. in a swimsuit right. or <laughs> would he <laughs> because the thing about the Saving Christmas movie is it's not what you th- it's not what a lot of people probably think it is oh okay it's not about the war on Christmas it's actually, I'm not even kidding, Kirk Cameron in the movie Saving Christmas is defending the capitalism of Christmas to Christians. Oh, wow. For real. Oh, okay. That's what the movie's about. I think anyone who sees that that poster and gets the gist of it, you think like, oh, this is Kirk Cameron saving Christmas from yeah. the liberal media. Yeah. That's not what it is. Oh. It, first of all, it's not a movie in that there's no narrative story. It's essentially like a nerd writer YouTube video, or like a video essay. Sure. It's really like a docu... It's like a... Not, you can't call it a documentary because it's just this guy... It's just him <laughs> giving his opinions for 90 minutes with sort of like visual accompaniments to go along it's not a story it's not it doesn't move it's it doesn't tell a narrative it's just mike siever telling you not to write the answers on the bottom of your shoes (laughs) because you will get caught even if you're not actively cheating on the test exactly but like the whole point of it is like hey christmas is supposed to be fun we're supposed to spend money and we're supposed to have a christmas tree it's it's like this mind-boggling thing that you don't expect it to be. It's it's wow. telling Christians. It's telling the more like so Hallmark owns all of the Camerons. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I can't remember, but there was this whole thing where he tries to like s- explain how the Christmas tree filled with presents is like some sort of shape that leads you towards God. What? It's like some sort of like mountain. Oh, like the pyramids? <laughs> yes, sure, <laughs> like the pyramids. I don't know. <laughs> but I was like, because I was floored because I hadn't, I'd heard people talking about the movie, but not actually saying what it contained and saying it was a bad movie. Actually, the person I heard talk about the most was Doug Benson, just as like a, 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 the, the stoner comedian, if anyone doesn't know it, like, Nothing, not talking about it from the Christian point of view at all. Just saying, like, this is a mind-boggling movie. I watch it. I'm like, this is what it's about? I was so (laughs) floored. And then it, like, there's, like, a five-minute thing at the end where someone on the set, like, improvised a rap. Like, he was an African-American man, so at least it wasn't, like, an appropriating thing. But, like, this guy on set, like, improvises a rap about Kirk Cameron and Christmas, like, for the camera. And they were like, this is good enough to put under the credits. It was not good enough to put under the credits. It's an amazing movie. We should do it for Patreon. Oh, no. no, You're going to subject me to this? (laughs) So... Back to the Snopes article. Uh, Another example in the latter vein is the claim that the Christmas Carol, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen, originated in the 15th century as a reaction to the dark, somber Christmas songs usually written in Latin of the time, and that its title phrase would more meaningfully be rendered in modern English as God Make You Mighty Gentlemen. One of the best... I've never heard this. I mean, <laughs> it must not be true because it's not a rumor I'd ever even heard. And then in yellow, which I don't know what that means on Snopes. I'm not an active uh, Snopes <laughs> goer to her. Uh, it says one of the best loved Christmas music 
one of the best love Christmas music is the song God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. The lyrics <laughs> are quite odd as we study it. God rest you, merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. It is a song that depicts the gospel. Christ came, destroy the works of the devil, and now we can rest and have comfort and joy. Thus we say Merry Christmas, right? Wrong. If you trace the original meaning of the word Mary in Old English, in Old English, the word Mary could mean happy, but is also used in place of the word mighty. Examples would be Robin Hood's Merry Mighty Men. The Merry Men <laughs> were so, that. I have not either, were, <laughs> were not some happy go lucky bunch, but were men that King, King Richard's fear. <laughs> this is loaded with. <sighs> Just. <laughs> <laughs> with, with editing mistakes. King Richard's what is fair. this? Us trying to talk? <laughs> I wanted to make a King Richard's Fair joke in there. <laughs> a very regional specific joke. <laughs> the nation of Great Britain was called Merry Old England, which was a powerful nation back then. The sentence eat, drink, and be merry was used during war times when soldiers would have to eat and drink because about? tomorrow they conquer. <laughs> No, where are we? I'm not sure where this, this is going. This, whoever, whoever came up with these <laughs> theories sounds like they were on drugs. They're like, you know what? Mary might mean happy, but it also might mean strong. Can I get a Snopes dive for this Snopes Because <laughs> I've never heard anyone claim these things. Thus, knowing the origin of the words... And also, by the way, super annoying. So every now and then on this website. A Johnson, what is this? It's, it's a nature's oh, made. nature's made. I thought it was Johnsonville. It it has yellow, like a yellow border, and it zooms in on around the text <laughs> and then zooms back out again while you're like in the middle Very of reading. Very intrusive ad. Uh, Thus, knowing the origin of the words would make our Christmas different. Knowing that what it, knowing the true meaning of Christmas is pretty much huge. Mary is not Santa Claus, oh boy, and all things cute about Christmas. Mary is mighty in all caps. It is when Jesus came down on earth, born in a manger, grew up. I think up as a Snopes carpenter. was like bored that day and like made up. I think Snopes like let's make up something that's false and then we'll just claim it's false and therefore it's not an ethical mistake. Because but it we'll turns out it was false. Truth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is when Jesus came down to earth, born in a manger, grew up as a carpenter, and was laser focused on his mission to destroy the works of the devil and to save mankind well, from first sin. Of all, well, first now of that all, is a mighty Merry Christmas. That is, uh, yes, it is. But first of all, that, okay, pause there. That brings us back to something I started to hint on where, and I just looked it up while you were, read, while you were reading all of this baffling Snopes article. It's so article. long. It's so long. <laughs> Let's read the whole thing no. oh at patreon.com slash Sadie Hawkespot. That, so this is apparently, at least according to my cursory Google search, the, one, the only major Christmas carol to name check Satan specifically, right? And I just find it weird, like, in A Christmas Carol, like, shouldn't we just not be worrying or thinking about Satan? And, like, yes, I guess technically Christ's mission involved a couple of things. And one of them was taking the power away from hell and take, you know, and, and like, giving us our salvation because he holds the keys to our salvation now. But I don't really think of Christ's sacrifice as specifically saving us from satan's power because like satan's not supposed to have the power you know what i mean because some of the, the I, I, in a lot of ways i'm not the only one to say this like i'm only mirroring what i've heard other people say the people that see satan as the most powerful are the christians like even satanists literally don't believe in a real satan so it's like christians especially sort of like more uh i don't know like w what eras like hundreds of years ago like put more power into the idea of satan like probably around the time this song was written like there's this idea of the enemy and the devil and satan and nowadays christians like don't talk about some christians don't even talk about satan and don't want to say the words devil and don't want to uh, they shy away from pokemon because it reminds them too much of devils and stuff they're so afraid of satan because they think he's got all this power and it's like I don't know. I don't think Satan has any place in the story of Christmas and the nativity and why God specifically came. He came to save us from our own sin. 
it was our sin. It was Adam and Eve's sin. Like the snake led them to the sin, but it was their choice. And Christ is here to save us from our sin. He's not specifically here to save us from Satan's power, unless you want to choose to give Satan all that power, which I think people should not choose to give Satan all that power. So it's weird. And this article from Snopes just confuses the whole matter because it's raising all these questions that nobody asked. <laughs> yeah, so I scrolled way further down outside of the yellow back into the, the white background. Uh, although God Rest You Merry Gentlemen has always been an undeniably religious rather than secular Christmas carol, the additional elements that are now claimed of it are not supported by textual and linguistic, and linguistic analysis. Evidence that God Rest You Merry Gentlemen dates to the 15th century is lacking. The earliest known source documenting, documenting the existence of a carol called God Rest You Merry Gentlemen is a broadsheet published in London around 1760 that included the song as part of a collection of three new Christmas carols, Emphasis Ours, which suggests the song originated much closer to the mid-18th century than the 15th century. That publication also used the word you throughout the lyrics and the title rather than the now archaic ye. Is that a Kanye West reference? <laughs> which, which, may, which may indicate that the latter form was not part of the original and was inserted later to instill the carol with an old, older, more formal sound. The venerable Oxford English Dictionary includes not a single definition or example of the word Mary, however, having ever having been used in English to convey the same sense as the word mighty. The word Mary descends from the words in other languages, meaning pleasant and short, as stated in the uh, Oxford English Dictionary. The when I think of short things, I think of pleasant things. <laughs> the development of sense, <laughs> like hobbits, the development <laughs> exactly. of sense appears to Second have been... Second <laughs> breakfast. Appears to have been short that shortens or whiles away the time entertaining pleasant. Mary is not and never has been related to the word mighty e either in origin or usage. Examples. As nobody ever thought it was. <laughs> right. As not a single person ever asked. And we are answering a question that was never asked. <laughs> Examples of the commonly offered to document the use of the word Mary as meaning mighty are oh and then it just goes on like and it's really <laughs> long and so we're gonna say thank you <laughs> to you folks and they I don't know there's some some I, maybe the yellow is I guess what they're questioning there's some Ecclesiastes and Isaiah and Luke quotes in here and this is a very long article and so we're just gonna say uh great debunked <laughs> Well, later on, we'll see what Wikipedia has to say, and we'll say, you know what? Good enough. Yeah. One thing uh, I noticed when I was Googling God Rest... Well, when I was YouTube searching God Rest You Merry Gentlemen, is that a lot of people would upload it as God Bless You Merry Gentlemen, which I don't know if that is an alternate title or if that's just kind of a, uh, like, what do you call that? A Berenstein Bear thing where people just kind of accidentally think it's blessed sometimes. Perhaps. But it's very interesting, at least the most interesting thing to learn in that, honestly, in that huge, pointless Snopes article. The most interesting fact which was buried is to learn that the song was originally called God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. And that somewhere it was moved to the antiquated ye because that sounded like better even to modern audiences today, it still sounds better to hear the ye part than the you part. Right. That's kind of funny to think that Yeah. the older generation actually said it how we would say it. Right. But we want to hear it the old way. Right. Sometimes I was just so excited when I found a Snopes article. I'm like, <laughs> I haven't looked at Snopes since like middle school. Exciting. Kind of forgot that it was a thing. And then I was like, oh, now I'm just confused. <laughs> So you had more to say about about the song, this specific version of this song. Not really. <laughs> oh, that's I was vamping for you for like the last 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah. What was I supposed to be looking up? Oh, no. So I looked it up and all I really had. <laughs> no, all I needed to do was open my Google Doc and see what my notes were. And all of my notes were was mentioning the Satan thing and the God bless God rest and that this sounds like it's out of five score. Gotcha. That's really all I've got to say. <laughs> But yeah, it's a very heavy song. It's a very, 
which is also kind of fitting because a lot more sort of metally Christian bands have also covered this song. Pillar did a version, like the the band that <laughs> is more revolutionary than Rage Against the Machine, according to the lead singer of Skillet or Pillar. Oh, no, oh, Pillar. Wow. Is it okay. Pillar or Skillet now? I'm so uh, confused. Uh, uh. Which of those two L bands? <laughs> It was Pillar, I think. Are you asking me? Because no. I have no idea. There was a headline where the lead singer of one of those bands did the, said that thing. Well, anyway. Sue, so, so would you like me to go back to the <laughs> song? August Burn Red <laughs> also did a version of this song. So metal bands, very Christian metal bands, very popular song for them. So it kind of fitting. Well, that, sure, it's metal. They mentioned Satan. Yeah. So Wikipedia, God rest, you marry gentlemen. Oh, this is the Wikipedia for God rest ye merry gentlemen, not God rest ye merry gentlemen. See, they keep with the original title. (laughs) Uh, Is an English traditional Christmas carol. It is in the Ruxburg collection, III425, and is listed as number 394 in the... What? Keep going. Oh, in the Roud Folk Song Index. It is also known as Tidings of Comfort and Joy... And by other variant incipients. Uh, hold on. The Roxburgh Ballads, just to do a little click through there, is a nineteen is an 1847 John Payne Collier printed... What? Sure. That checks out. Genre, Christmas Carol, based on Luke 2. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> In 1847, John Collier printed a book of Roxburgh ballads. It consisted of 1,341 broadside ballads from the 17th century, mostly English. So it's like, I guess, a famous book that was printed of like ballads from the 17th century. And a broadside, also known as a broadsheet, is a single sheet of inexpensive paper printed on one side, often with a ballad hymn news or sometimes with woodcut illustrations so this guy john payne collier in 1847 collected over 1000 ballads from the 17th century and we have him to thank for god rest you merry gentlemen the earliest known printed edition of the carol is in a broadsheet dated to (laughs) go ahead and look into that 1760 A precisely datable reference to the carol is found in the November 1764, goodness, 1764 edition of the Monthly Review. Some sources claim that the carol dates as far back as the 16th century. Other date, well, Snopes said it was the 15th, so who knows? (laughs) Others date it to later, to the 18th century or early 19th century. So the traditional English melody is in the minor mode the earliest printed edition of the melody appears to be in a parody published in 1820 by <laughs> william home <laughs> in a parody the earliest printed edition is a says. parody <laughs> wow like <laughs> it's about william home's dog um it had been associated with the carol since at least the mid 18th century when it was recorded by james nars in a handwritten manuscript under the title the old christmas carol i don't want to do these anymore danny can you imagine if <laughs> if can you imagine if all record of the song jingle bells had disappeared from history except for jingle bells batman smells robin laid an egg and then historians are like i think that this was actually a second variant parody of the original Jingle Bells Jingle All the Way. Who knows? And then people are like, no, 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 no. Check Snopes. Who knows? 200 years from now, they could believe that that's what it's about. They'll think that, I don't know, Batman was some sort of grand historical figure. They'll think that the Warner Brothers Corporation owned the song Jingle Bells. The traditional English melody is in the minor mode. Oh, I already said this bit. I swear, I don't want to do these anymore. I put these in because I'm like, oh, these are so fun and interesting and they're never fun and only sort of interesting well i'm looking now with you at the god rest you merry gentlemen wikipedia page and it is just a lot of the publication history of the song yeah like there's not a lot of actual information about the text even within the lyric section it's just like listing the listing that variants of the text exist in different periodicals but not really telling you what they are oh well here's a chart that actually tells you 
the differences between three different main versions of the song. The Beauties of Magazine's 1775 version, the Christmas Carols Ancient and Modern from 1833, and the Carols for Choirs from 1961. And then it lays out like line by line where they are the same and where they differ. So God Rest You Merry Gentlemen is the same. Let Nothing You Dismay is the same. And then the first change is in the earliest version, it's Remember Christ Our Savior. But in the in the two more modern ones, it's For Christ, for Jesus Christ Our Savior. And they're, they're both... Oh, and then one is... Uh, they're, 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 we're just getting into the weeds. One is Was Born on Christmas Day, and the other was Was Born Upon This Day. Gotcha. Oh, uh, the Satan part is a little different. To save poor souls from Satan's power is the oldest text. But then with the second text and in the 1960s one, it's to save us all from Satan's power. Uh, so really... This all just goes back to nothing for Christmas, Danny. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it, as it says, uh, handwritten by James Nears uh, in a manuscript under the title The Old Christmas Carol, Hone's version of the tune differs from the present melody in the third line. The full current melody was published by Chapel in 1855. The carol is referred to in Charles Dickens' 1843 novella, A Christmas Carol. It is also quoted in George Eliot's 1861 novel, Silas Martyr. So a very influential Christmas carol <laughs> this is, evidently. I'm skipping to the cover to the list of notable cover versions. American country singer Garth Brooks' version of the song, uh, for the week ending 8 January 2020, peaked at number 69. Yeah, up top. Oh. <laughs> up top. <laughs> On the hot country songs of Billboard and Country Airplay. Uh, American Temporary Christian Band Mercy Me's version peaked at number 34 on a couple of different charts. Uh, Tim Bowman, American smooth jazz gospel singer Tim Bowman, had a version. The Glee cast had a version. August Burns Red, which I said, has a version. And then probably the most famous version that I know of is the uh, Bare Naked Ladies with Sarah McLaughlin, where they kind of do like a little jangly old jazzy time ragtime version. Right. Pentatonics that came up a bunch in my YouTube search, like just searching pen- uh, searching Reliant K, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen, the Pentatonics yes. version came up for some yeah. reason a bunch. And yeah. So one other thing that came up in like the general song dive was there's uh, Greg Howlett, Inspirational Piano Music, has an arrangement analysis on God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. Uh, but I'm just going to leave that out there for you guys to know that it exists. So those of you like you can see my socks, Daniel, who would like to know more about the origins of the arrangement and such can go there to find that information out. <laughs> Well, then we will take our break, and when we get back, uh, Even we'll be more getting nothing dive. for Christmas. <laughs> oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, Merry Christmas. We hope the season meets you with love and comfort, and ask that if you're enjoying Sadie Hawkins' pod, please show love and comfort to us by rating and reviewing the show on Apple Podcasts. We also want to remind you to call your family if you can't be with them this season and to call and interact with our show at our voicemail line, 402-95-SADIE. After you write your letter to Santa, you can send an email to sadiehawkinspod at gmail.com and visit our Instagram and Twitter, which are both at sadiehawkinspod. Once you and all the shoppers rush home with your treasures, curl up by the Yule Log and visit sadiehawkinspod.com for the link to our merch store for shirts, mugs, and stickers. We also want to wish a very Merry Christmas to our patrons at patreon.com slash sadiehawkinspod. There's Joshua A., Timothy, Daniel, Josh M., J.R., Eric, Joel, Connor, Michael, Samantha, Jimmy E. Pod, This Might Be a Podcast, Tucker, and Brady. 
You can sign up to our Patreon for bonus episodes, which include us reviewing the songs from K is for Karaoke and our read-through of the Complex Infrastructure book. Join the War on Christmas with Sadie Hawkins Pod. Oh, wait, what? That's how it works, right? Uh... So we have a cool but kind of confusing website that I'm not 100% sure of its accuracy called Guest guestpectacular.com and it says like when Reliant K last played this song live so Reliant K played God Rest You Merry Gentlemen cover song God Rest You Merry Gentlemen by Reliant K was played in 7 out of 189 shows with a probability of 3.7% to listen to it live <laughs> since it debuted on December 1st, 2010. It's so and then under information, there's a picture of the Bare Naked Ladies Christmas album and it says 3.7%. I don't understand. <laughs> this song this song has brought this song has brought a weird energy to the show this week. It is filled online with the most meaningless posts. Like, what is it about this song? It's a very good song that just brings out the worst in people. Is it Satan's power? <laughs> Artist Rely K cover of traditional album Bare Naked for the Holidays. <laughs> Released December 8th, 2021. Listen on Spotify. No, so confusing. Um... Uh, God rest you, merry gentlemen. Stats on tour. Twas the tour before Christmas, December 17th, 2010 to December 5th, 2010. Four out of four concerts, 100% played. So I I don't know. And then it, and then it goes on. First played, December 1st, 2010. People's Court, Des Moines, Iowa. Is this a thing? I don't understand. <laughs> is, this, is this a music venue? I'm confused. <laughs> This is so, this, everything about this week is just a fever dream. I feel like everything you felt from your booster shot is infecting this episode. Starts with zero, ends with zero, played as an encore zero percent. So it was never, it never kicked off a show. It never ended a show and it was never played as an encore. According to this very confusing website that believes this song was on the album Bare Naked for the Holidays. Uh, this song was played twice, at least, because there are two performances on YouTube, but we'll get to that. <laughs> we have Santa Scuzz Sundays, one track at a time song review. Noise Rock. Santa's Scuzz Sundays, Reliant K, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen, December 5th, 2021. Oh my goodness, this like just was posted two days ago as of recording this episode. Uh, Happy holidays to you and ho ho hello. This is Santa Claus, the big white bearded red coat wearing man who you once met at a place like... He's real! <laughs> like hun hunting, hunting Dawn Garden and Leisure Center. What? What the hell is going on? What are you talking about? <laughs> she can't. I've never seen Jessica <laughs> laugh like this. Her eyes are completely shut and she can't stop laughing. <laughs> Hallelujah! Holy shit! He wears the Tylenol. <laughs> okay. And I'm taking over Jacob's Scuzz Sundays feature on one track at a time. What? Who I am not connected to in any way at all whatsoever because he deserves a Did little break write from for writing. <laughs> from writing up about a different piece of music every day. Believe me, I would know. As somebody who makes toys in the workshop with a team of bumbling elves in the Arctic all year round. However, while I'm performing my small chores like writing Christmas cards on my typewriter in the office or checking to see who has been naughty or nice, I love to get down to some pop punk from the late 90s and mid 00s. It's a guilty pleasure <laughs> the of mine. Mid 00s. <laughs> that would have been a way better joke. <laughs> Up top. <laughs> Uh, 
it's a guilty pleasure of mine, but the trashier, the better. The trashier, the better. Did they mean the thrashier? Did you mean the thrashier, Santa? That's all right. I'll give you a break. You're very busy this time of year. (laughs) One of my modern favorites is... Oh, you know, and I didn't realize, I mean, I know that Santa Claus obviously is not American, but Santa Claus uses the more formal you in the, in his spelling of favorites, is the fast, frenetic, soft metal cover version of the ancient carol, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen, by the Christian contemporary punk band, Reliant K. <laughs> contemporary punk band? <laughs> Who you may know from winning two double awards. Who you may know. <laughs> Wait, could you read that last sentence again? Who you may know. No, from no, 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 go further back. <laughs> God, Rich. No, too far back. <laughs> Contemporary Christian punk band Relying K. Huh? With two. Who you may know from winning two Dove Awards and releasing two gold certified albums in their careers. Jacob also tells me that Matt Teeson, the lead vocalist, has also produced material for Owl City and Switchfoot. I feel like Santa should know that. Does Santa not know all? (laughs) Oh, this is Santa's way of telling us his power is waning. Oh, no! We all have to believe a little bit harder and it'll all be okay. His connection to the force is diminishing. <laughs> God rest ye merry gentlemen is taken from the band's second Christmas album, the puntastic Let It Snow Baby, Let It Rain Deer. That includes a mix of cover versions and original tracks. It has been hailed by Jesus Freak Hideouts as one of their better <laughs> modern Christmas projects you can find today. Wow, they've won a Dove Award and they've been covered on Jesus Freak Hideout? <laughs> This is a double threat, this band. It is... <laughs> and it earned good reviews from IGN and Pop Sugar. Let's rock out to Reliant K below. Oh, no, don't start playing. There we go. Released in 2007, Let It Snow Baby, Let It Reindeer sold over 4,500 copies in its first re- week of release. And although most of the band's licensed cover versions of numbers like Silver Bell, Slave Ride, and Oh Holy Night were eventually pulled from iTunes. I love that they started licensed. <laughs> Why did they? Well, maybe it's important to the rest of the what they were they're going with this. Uh, were eventually pulled from iTunes. They have later appeared on Goatee's Christmas compilation CD, Tis the Season to Be Goatee. And you were talking about that earlier, yeah. how these were the whatever. So there you go. Um, that has been available in shops since 2010. Short and Sweet is a Christmas cookie at just about two minutes long in duration. Reliant K's version of God Rest You Merry Gentlemen approaches Christmas from just about every angle of Christmas as a proof. Wait, what? Reliant K's version of God Rest You Merry Gentlemen approaches Christmas from just about every angle of Christmas as a proof of a well-rounded concept. Santa might, much like us, need a, need a rest around this time of year. Uh, a long winter's nap is, is in order. With familiar lyrics that touch upon the birth of Christ and the capturing the spirit of the season as Thiessen promises us with O oh, tidings of comfort and joy and to free all those who trust him from Satan's power and might. Over the top of some lightly distorted guitar riffs that keeps the tempo of the tune rolling at a quick pace, it feels surprisingly heavier than you may expect from Reliant K in terms of the tone and textures. And it contains some unique guitar melodies that give the track an excitable feel as the beats shift back and forth between the speakers of my grotto at certain times. Wait, Santa has a grotto? (laughs) There's so much lore being dropped here. (laughs) My little helpers also love this one because they say it manages to be a fun and diverse festive venture. Overall, I think there's a lot to like here. And this is a classic. Is this where he hides out from Tim Allen and... Oh, maybe. They would never think... Do you think it's it's the grotto at the Playboy Mansion? Because, I mean, I don't think they would think to look there. Is he who bought the Playboy Mansion (gasps) from the estate of... Playboy? What's Mr. Playboy? 
Overall, I think there's a lot to like here, and this is a fresh and original spin on the classic Carol. That brings us to the last photograph of the post. Yep, that's what it says. Jacob will be back tomorrow, and thank you for checking out his blog every day. I would if I had more time to. Alas, I have got presents to pack for the children of Alaska. He'll be here tomorrow to share some music with you from a New York-based soul soulful rock trio who share the same who share the same name as a Mexico <laughs> set animation film. What? That Disney Pixar released in 2017, oh, featuring members of Dirty Projectors, what? Pavo Pavo, what? Chimney, and Destroyer among their lineup. Santa, why? <laughs> All right, this is uh, <laughs> that was a feast for the mind. Indeed. Uh oh. I don't even know if I should continue. <laughs> I don't know either. So she is, there's a, she is beloved goatee comp review. And I know that we've been on this blog before, but I'm not sure if it was for a Christmas review or not. Cause there's only so much out there, you know, Reliant K content covering reviewing content out there, let alone their Christmas songs. And we've been doing this for a minute. So I apologize when we do run into repeats as we do. uh, And when I don't catch them ahead of time. Okay. Yeah, I, I, Jessica. Yeah, I forgive you. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, Danny. Uh, this is from She Is Beloved, from Amy Sondova, December sixteenth, twenty ten. Tis the season to be goatee is an excellent mix of a cri- of Christmas songs and unfortunately, tiny pick. They don't have the tiny pick link anymore uh. up here. Bummer. This reminds me of the the photo bucket days of MySpace. <laughs> uh, is an excellent mix of Christmas songs from beloved goatee artists like Reliant K, House of Heroes, Stephanie Smith, and the rest of the goatee gang. Having been a longtime favorite of mine, I could probably enjoy listening to Reliant K sing the alphabet, but their renditions of Silber- Silver Bells and, and God Rest on You Merry Gentlemen. Um, yeah, tour they will. You never know. Silver Bells and God Rest You Merry Gentlemen, who are are simply stunning in its delivery, while Oh Holy Night is a bit underwhelming. Also notably is Stephanie Smith delivery of Reliant K's I Celebrate the Day, which the artist has made distinctively her own. Her version of Jingle Bell Rock is another happy addition to this compilation. House of Heroes performs All I Want for Christmas is You, which I like much better than Mariah Carey's version, as well as O Come Emmanuel. The band does a satisfactory job on the difficult carol carefully. Vocals without getting too loud or too soft. Well, I don't care for... Alicia Woods, I'm sure that others will love her soulful interpretations of Merry Christmas Baby and Jingle Bells. Tis the season to be goatee is a good offering of what goatee has to offer, but it's really Reliant K House of Heroes and Stephanie Smith that make this record shine brightly. Amazon.com is offering Tis the Season to be Goatee as a $5 download for the month of December. There's an asterisk <laughs> after that, though, so might might not be a, a thing anymore. The <laughs> offer limited. Yes. Then we have... By the way, sorry, it was Skillet. It was the guy from Skillet made headlines for saying that his band is more uh, uh, politically relevant than Rage Against the Machine. Not Pillar. I'm sorry I mixed up the two double L bands that live in the same neuron in my brain. So this is an amazing... uh youth ministry student ministry page i just love the little the little doodle at the top uh rocking christmas tunes and it has a little picture of a little guy who kind of looks like a teeson doodle looks like a little teeson doodle with headphone over the ear headphones and an old school ipod yeah it kind of looks like the the spokesperson for like a uh, like a late 90s early 2000s electronic store like yeah. a little radical dude, little cartoon radical man holding an iPod with a Christmas hat, winking and holding up one finger, like pointing and going, like, hey, you're number one, like Sonic the Hedgehog. 
free music for the season. Ooh, once again, we are pleased to bring you our exclusive Christmas sampler album. It's our way of saying thanks. Get your free download code now. Call us at 800-725-3300 or email us. What a horrible way to get a free song on the internet to have to call a phone number and get a download code. That's like how my mom gives me Amazon cards for Christmas. She's afraid to like just go on Amazon and like buy me a digital card that gets sent to my email. So she calls me on the phone and she goes to the store, buys an Amazon card, scratches off the number, then calls me on the phone and I have to write it down. Must download by midnight on December 24th, 2015. Download one per church. 2015? No! I thought that this would be like a post from like 2008. In 2015, they wanted you to call up and get a download code? That's abysmal. (laughs) So here's the playlist. Relying K God, Rusty Mary Gentleman, Capital Kings, Carol of the Bells, House of Heroes, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, Rest Life Worship, High Higher, Christmas Version, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> New Spring, White Christmas, Jasmine, Hurtado, Oh Holy Night, Elliot, Emmanuel, The Choir, Peace, Love, and Light. Some other links. What is YOLO? <laughs> what? <laughs> Just what is... Wait, no. what is... What is YLO? Excuse me. Uh-huh. <laughs> what is Youth Leaders Only? Uh-huh. Why Youth Leaders Only? Uh, how to join and questions contact us. How do I join youth leaders only? I don't know. This sounds like a cult, and I would maybe not call that number. (laughs) There are other ways to obtain free music on the internet. That is a horrifying... I just don't have to call anyone. You know, I miss, like, info hotlines. That was a thing in the 90s that, like, I really enjoyed. Like, radio stations would basically have... It was the equivalent, uh, I mean, this is real dated, and it was so obscure that I don't think people even then really knew about them. You had to pay attention. A radio station would have a hotline that you could call, and it was basically like an audio website. And you'd like call up, and they'd say, thanks for calling the WAAF info line. Press 1 to hear local shows. Press 2 to hear the joke of the day. Press 3 to hear our playlist for the week. Press 4. And I would, and multiple stations would have these things, and I would call them all. And then finally, we'll wrap up this week's deep dive with a, a compilation review from Stars and Stripes. <laughs> Okay. This website is a mess. Uh, the Free Stars and Stripes newsletter. Subscribe. Click here. Okay, we have to exit out to see whatever. Okay, then we have a Navy Federal advertisement. Then at the bottom, it says articles left for subscribe or already have an account login. Here. Why, why are we still doing this? Why are you only finding the most broken, bizarre, mind-boggling websites? What is it about this song that brings you to the... Br- this is like the... This is like the, the... If the internet, I don't know, was some sort of like science fiction movie, this is the old city. This is the original city that the new Space Age city was built on top of. That's the part of the internet we're in now. Broken buildings, mutants, and you might, zombies. You might actually be onto something with that, Danny. Christmas CDs range from orchestral to ornery by Bi- Brian Bowers, December 9th, 2007. As you might expect, Christmas time is popular with Christian musicians, and this year is no different. Three of the industry ampersand hashtag A217 semicolon. Why is this has. happening? Top artist Hello, ampersand hashtag A212. Michael W. Smith, Jars of Clay, Reliant K, and hashtag 212. Jessica's eyes are all teared up. Offer their musical musings about Jesus, his birth, and even some of the secular trappings of the holiday. I'm giving April a pumpkin spice treat. Smith represents. 
Oh, and she takes it away. She's like, I'm going to go eat this in her Smith rep- I, I don't blame you, April. <laughs> Smith represents the best traditional wing of contemporary Christian music and ampersand hashtag 8220 semicolon at ampersand hashtag 8217 semicolon S. Why? A wonderful Christmas ampersand why did, hashtag 8221. Why won't Jesus save me from Satan's power? <laughs> should appeal to those who prefer a, a mellower take on the holiday. Today, ampersand hashtag 8217 I, semicolon S. I don't believe in anything anymore. Backed by an orchestra and choirs of children and adults, Smith ampersand hashtag 8217. Why are you doing this? You're choosing to do this. Album is, pl- is the pl- this, this is revenge. Um, this is revenge for for years of torture, <laughs> making making jokes and doing gaslighting jokes on Jessica. This is her revenge on me. Album is the pleasant sort of music that plays in the background as hot chocolate is sipped and eulogs burn. <sighs> Now, I'll just skip down a little bit. The rock band Jars of Clay offers something a bit less traditional. <laughs> Ampersand hashtag eight two two zero semicolon Christmas songs period ampersand hashtag eight two two one semicolon. Please stop. I'll tell you anything you want to know. Just stop. Most tracks are most of the tracks are quite familiar, but the presentation is an ampersand hashtag two Stop seven. It. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> but I haven't even gotten to the part about relay K yet. Oh my god! Can you skip to that, please? <laughs> okay, here we go. Those looking for a little edge should check out oh. Ampersand Hashtag 8220 semicolon let it oh. snow baby let it ampersand hashtag 8230 no. semicolon reindeer comma ampersand hashtag 8221 semicolon by the pop punk band Reliant K. The merry punkster Matt Thiessen goes to work on Christmas themes and comes up with ampersand hashtag. The internet should be illegal. <laughs> Ampersand hashtag eight two two zero semicolon I ampersand hashtag eight two one seven semicolon I think, M. I think this is some sort of like Russian launch code, and we're not supposed to be letting it out. Getting ampersand hashtag eight two one seven semicolon nothing ampersand hashtag eight two one seven semicolon for Christmas ampersand hashtag eight two two one semicolon ampersand. Hey, hashtag eight two two one semicolon. Complaining about someone who snitched about misdeeds. Ampersand hashtag eight two one two semicolon and ampersand hashtag eight two two zero semicolon. Santa Claus is thumping to town. Ampersand hashtag eight two two one two semicolon ampersand hashtag two one two about mayhem at the North Pole that results in hitchhiking Chris Kringle. The guys from Ohio offer a cool high energy version of ampersand hashtag two two zero. <laughs> Angels we have heard on high Ampersand hashtag comma <laughs> A punked up Ampersand hashtag I don't <laughs> Deck the Please halls stop. And a blazing Ampersand hashtag 220 Semicolon 12 days of Christmas Period Ampersand oh. hashtag 8221 Semicolon they ampersand hashtag eight two one seven semicolon re followed by a peaceful piano set ampersand hashtag eight two one two semicolon open with ampersand hashtag two two zero semicolon silent night slash away in a manger ampersand hashtag eight two two one semicolon. 
Sorry. <laughs> and following the ep- excellent I celebrate the day which asks some weighty questions about Jesus and his time on earth <laughs> but energy returns ampersand hashtag 8212 semicolon or explodes ampersand hashtag 8212 to semicolon again in ampersand hashtag two two zero semicolon we wish you a merry christmas ampersand eight two two one <laughs> and a carol version of ha- handle ampersand hashtag one two one seven semicolon s ampersand hashtag two two zero semicolon messiah ampersand hashtag eight two two one semicolon that you ampersand hashtag eight two one seven semicolon ll All never right. heard in church no i've definitely never heard any of that in church well, I don't even I don't even want to <laughs> I don't want to do anything anymore. You know And that's the end of the podcast, yeah, folks. Yeah, I'm constantly breaking you every week mentally. You finally done it to me. Well, one thing, speaking about the internet just like being wrong, I uh, one thing I meant to mention is that on YouTube, when you look for this song in the official upload by Goatee Records, for some reason, online, it's credited to House of Heroes. Oh, interesting. But on Spotify, it's correct. No, it's Abandoned Kansas. No, it's both. Oh, I was about wow. To get to that. <laughs> oh, wow. When you go on your computer or on your phone and type in God Rest You Merry Gentlemen Goatee Records, it's credited to House of Heroes. But then for some bizarre reason, on the television app, it was credited to Abandoned Kansas. But it's the same YouTube upload. I don't know what's going on with this song. (laughs) This song is like some sort of black hole of the internet that just makes everything wrong. So if you want to listen to this on YouTube, I guess listen to some fan upload or look for the House of Heroes, quote unquote, version of God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. Well, there is one version of this song, and I don't want my phone to brick if I play it, because I don't know what it is about this song. But here is, there are two, there are two video uploads from concerts in 2010 of them performing this song, one in Fort Lauderdale and one in Carborough, North Carolina. They're both on a Christmas tour they did, but only the Fort Lauderdale upload actually sounds listenable. So here's that version. Nice. So Hoops is playing an acoustic guitar. Schneck is, I guess, playing a electric guitar. And Thiessen is just holding the microphone. And it's that like vocoder filtered microphone that he uses for some songs around this time. And it's, and it's like that for another minute. So it sounds cool. This is definitely a song that they should like play again if they do another tour around Christmas time 2022. Um, yeah. Or just do break out a couple Christmas songs just for the heck of it. Um, yeah. For the um, yeah, heck of it. Um, so yeah, other versions include Bad Religion, Pillar, Not Skillet. Wait, 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 wait. What? Earlier you said it was Skillet who had the said no. oh oh okay Killer okay does an overdramatic <laughs> butt rock version of this song Gotcha Skillet is so they were bigger than Jesus. Christian band they were both Christian bands Skillet and Pillar are both Christian sort of butt rock rap rock sort of bands hard rock bands 
Skillet is the one that's making headlines for making all these sort of wild claims about their importance and all this stuff. Pillar is not the one responsible for that headline making action. <laughs> but Pillar did cover the song. Is that cleared up? <laughs> yes, thank you. August Burn Red did a version. But more importantly, oh, there's that famous version that I recall. I mentioned the Bare Naked Ladies with Sarah McLaughlin. But way more important, I thought we'd only get to talk about them the once, and this is my revenge for everything you just did. Guess who's back two weeks in a row? Mm. Oh, okay. That's right. Bunch of believers. Two weeks in a row. I like this. It's I, jazzy. It is good. Oh. And immediately the oh, vocals, the vocals. Oof. Oof. It's so funny because like we talked about him last week, bunch of believers, this like strange, like completely unknown entity of who are these guys they're only represented in this strange south park styled artwork like are there photos of them were they real people were they a conglomerate who were they they were bob the tomato and larry the cucumber (laughs) were they secretly just the veggie tales but i bought the first bunch of believers album and it's garbage (laughs) so i never i think i did actually eventually like find this Scalaluya one for like clearance and not Scalaluya, sorry, the Scala <laughs> La La La. Scalaluya is way better than this. I found the Scala La 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 Bunch of Believers CD on clearance once and I bought it just to have it in my collection, but I never listened to it. So I'm listening to this for the first time and I'm like, oh, this actually sounds pretty good. Like the horns and everything sound great. And then as soon as the singers kick in, last week it was a guy, this week it's a girl, the vocals are just atrocious. And not only that, but, like, there's something about the timing of this ska version that they, like, sort of mess up when they try to start singing it. So listen to this. There was born on Christmas Day to save us all from fate and fire when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. I, I can't, I don't know anything about time signatures, but somehow they've, like, they're doing this fast. They're doing the dan dan like this beat this beat here with this ska song but they can't get the lyrics in on time i listened to other ska versions like other ska bands have covered this song and none of them mess it up like this they all kind of like lay back like there's something called like the fayetteville ska alliance some under the radar smaller ska band they do like a cool sort of rock steady beat and it fits perfectly but this one say that all of a sudden that's what it is gonna stray like they can't even I don't know why you think this is revenge on me. It sounds like it's just breaking your brain even further. (laughs) I'm just over here vibing. Covered and joy. Man, I just want to get out there into the pit. I just want shows to come back. So a bunch of believers can have that reunion. Their big cartoon heads up on stage. <laughs> and you just get in the pit, skank it up, wall of death to a bunch of believers. I'm here for this. Jessica's enjoying it. Jessica's, we're all broken. <laughs> And it just goes on like this for two more minutes. I can't believe it. I can't. I don't know what's going on with you. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with me. I don't know what's going on with anything. Well, there's only one cover to speak of. There's a couple of bass covers. There's a couple of drum covers. There's a fun one by a leader, Ephraim. A-T-E-L-I-E-R. And then last name is E P H R A. I am go check out their drum cover because they did it outside in the driveway while it was snowing. Oh wow. Set up their drum kit outside. Then like a family member or friend is like in the background playing in the snow and it must have been like set up deliberately. Really That's fun cool. setup, but it's just a drum cover if we listen to it. So instead we're just gonna listen to this one cover that I found of Reliant K's God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. Hey, 
Save us all from sin's power and we have gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. I believe we've been in this bedroom before. <laughs> This is Big Sister 2001. <laughs> yep. And we have been here once before. With the Justin Bieber and the pack leader from Twilight. One of the most 2010 rooms yep. you have ever seen. Ye- yellow walls, phlegm yellow walls. And what is that like a brat sign on the wall? I can't quite tell. I think it says believe or beware. Okay. Maybe it says believe. Believe. And she's just wearing one headphone and singing without the vo- without the musical accompaniment for us to hear. This is great. And there's the same energy as the whole episode. There's a pillow on the bed. It's a purple crown that says princess. Right on. I love it. So, Jessica. Yes. God rest you, merry gentlemen, oh, by Relying K. Uh, Do you like I'm this song? I'm definitely ready to get some rest. <laughs> Do you like this song the same, more, or less than before we did it? I know my answer. Um, I think I like it. Hashtag ampersand eight two two one semicolon. Well, I like it. I like it the same because this is really the first time I've listened to this song. If I randomly listened to it once before when we first discovered it, I did not like retain memory of it. So honestly, this is really the first time I heard it. So I can't say if I like it more. From... So thanks very much, folks. Merry Christmas.